Hey, this is Matthew Riddle, the King of Bros, and you're watching the BWF Podcast? Wrestling fans, if you've missed one of our episodes, don't worry, you can catch them all at our webpage at bwfpodcast.com. You can stay alert and catch up with all the latest news at our Facebook page. Then, if you like our content, go over to the Patreon page. You can check that out for free. Like and share this video. And if you comment on the video, you will be automatically entered to win merch. I'm talking t-shirts, rolling papers, and more. That being said, let's get the show on the road. Let's go. All right, all right, all right. And don't forget to subscribe by clicking on the bell. We are joined this week, as always, by Canada's favorite media personality, Mr. G. Patrick Condon. Patrick, how are you this week? Hello, Aaron. Hi. <clears throat> I'm great. Thank you. Thank you for that great introduction. Yes, another, uh, another beautiful week here on the BWF Podcast busy week and uh just want to uh, make sure that the people out there are going to the website we're paying for the website and i've been watching a lot of other youtube videos and uh, i want to say stuff uh, uh that uh, other ones are saying that seem to get some interactions and stuff like look guys if you don't have the money to subscribe to the patreon don't do it okay we don't want to take money you can't afford we just want you to be a part of the nation, okay? You don't need to pay to be a part of this party. You know what I'm saying? Am I right, Aaron? You're absolutely right. You do not need to pay. Go check out the Patreon for absolutely free. And there's all kinds of cool stuff on there. Stuff like behind the scenes pictures and videos from pay-per-views from over the past 20 years. Um, I know I have stuff on there from SummerSlam 2004 all the way WrestleMania 40. I know Patrick has some stuff from Survivor Series last year of CM Punk's debut on there. All kinds of cool stuff. Retro yeah. restoration with I, action figures. I didn't, get, I didn't get any of that footage when I was at uh, in Chicago. I missed all of that. But we do have our uh, our boy, our young boy, our, uh, our uh, boy Brandon, who is methodically um, uh, uh, putting together the uh, archives and um, and uh, also uh, doing a, a running uh, a sheet of uh, of information. Um, he started right from the beginning, right from uh, the start when we covered WrestleMania uh, 39. And <clears throat> I'm not sure where he's up to now, but uh, I don't know if it's a coincidence or not. But uh, Brandon uh, recently told me he was leaving, so uh, <laughs> hopefully. It, it's not because of anything that we've said and I'm looking forward to getting the information back. Cause I'm more or less like if I want a political career, I need to know what I said on these things, especially in the first one where I was apologizing all the time and almost looking to get canceled. Uh, so uh, it's very valuable. And if it means in the end that this is what happened and, and Brandon can no longer be associated with the brand, with the BWF brand, so be it. So be it. But Brandon, you've been a great help here. Uh, thank you so much for all your contributions. You've been great. Absolutely. Um, yeah. Great summer students. Looking forward to uh, to seeing where he goes next in his career. All the best in your future endeavors. In a good way. Not in a good like way. In a, in a, in WWE, WWE way. way. No, no, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, kind of, why don't we quickly go over what we have in store this week for our lovely BWF nation? Sure. Yes, please. please. <laughs> uh, we are going to continue our series in what ifs fantasy booking with Bret Hart. And what if Bret did not get screwed at the Montreal screw job and he stayed in the WWF 
and we're going to fantasy book that run until WrestleMania 14. Uh, we also have a nice. brand new tournament we are going to start this week. It's going to be a good one, I promise. We're also going to draw the name of one lucky winner to win a Shockmaster t-shirt. Oh, my God. We have that and a whole lot more. We have trivia. Jeez, we have it all this week, man. We have it all. Let's, uh, let's boogie. Let's, get, let's get right into it. Yes, sir. <laughs> Chronicles. I'm enjoying this. I, I have to say, I'm enjoying uh, this little step into the into the what ifs, uh, into the multiverse. Of, the multiverse, uh, yes. Of, of Aaron <laughs> Bishop's mind, and uh, yeah, I'm glad that you uh, specified what this week's was because I wasn't sure if the screw job was still going to happen, but yet Brett would still stay. Like if he wasn't, if he just wasn't going to leave, but they still had to screw him to get the belt off him. But I guess now that I'm saying it out loud, they probably, he probably wouldn't have had that big of a problem with dropping it in the first place then. Well, we are going to, in this multiverse, Brett has signed that year long or uh, year long, his lifelong contract with that 20 year long contract with the WWF. And that is going to be honored. Uh, the screw job will not come into play, and we just continue on as if life was. Tickety boo, as they say. Now, <clears throat> before we get in it, because again, we're not going to see the screw job. Um, I got two questions for you about the screw job. First one is uh, Do you think that Brett was in the right for refusing to drop the title when asked? at survivor series you know <clears throat> for a long 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 time i was on brett's side about it you know brett's our hero um you know what, what can you say but now that it's like 30 some odd years whatever it is uh past or almost 30 years i guess now christ it's been that long anyway um i think maybe vince was in the right i don't think brett should have said no if it's Vince's company, um, you know, friend, Vince had the contracts. I mean, I don't know. I, I think you have to listen to the person who owns the company, right? And do what he says. Um, I, I, I understand why Brett didn't want to do it. Of course, that I was on his side for a long time. You know, he's our Canadian hero. We don't want to see our heroes lose, especially to, at the time, the scumbag that was Shawn Michaels. I mean, he was putting the Canadian flag up his nose and wiping his ass and all that stuff with it. You just, you didn't want to see that. But that being said, it's a company, it's a business. And looking back on it now, and not through personal views, but through a business-like view, yes, Vince McMahon was in the right, Brett was in the wrong. Wow, there you go. And then my second uh, question, which um, maybe uh, you've already answered, but do you think that the screw job was a shoot? Or do you think... It was a work. Well, let's look at it this way. Wrestling with Shadows, the documentary, right? That's the only documentary in the history of wrestling that got backstage that, you know, wasn't WWF owned. How is this possible that they were just there at this time frame to record all this stuff, all these happenings leading up to the biggest angle in the history of wrestling. I mean, it is, is it a coincidence? I don't know. Um, I always thought for a long time that it was a shoot, but now I'm leaning towards work. Wow. Interesting. I mean, you could spend an hour just going through uh, that, which maybe we will someday. I'm, I'm back and forth. Um, Scott Hall uh, thinks it was uh, work. And <clears throat> if you go through 97, there's a lot of stuff that's said during Brett matches that l leads you to believe 
<clears throat> I mean, it foreshadows the screw job. But then you go, well, these guys were uh, could never plan that meticulously ahead, you know? And sure they could. Yeah, you think the um, – like there's uh, – I think it's in the um, – in the match with Austin at Mania 13, that Austin gets the sharpshooter on Brett, and Jim Ross says, can you imagine that, if Bret Hart taps out to uh, his own his sharpshooter? Own yeah. yeah. And then, you know, then it happens. And, and that's just the one off the top of my head. There's other stuff happening along the way. I don't know. Um, it, uh, it, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's really, it's a discussion on its own. But interesting to hear your take on it. In this world, it never happens, though. <laughs> we are in the Bishverse now, the Bish multiverse. And viewers at home, oh, I wish I had the, uh, the only thing I got is Mortal Kombat. I wish I had the, I wish I had the, uh, the Wayne's uh, Twilight World. Zone. <laughs> yeah, oh, Twilight, Twilight Zone, Zone. Too. Yeah, that'd be good, too, yeah. Yes. And viewers at home, you're now entering the Bishverse. And in this scenario, Brad Hart, the hitman, doesn't get screwed by Vince McMahon at Survivor Series in Montreal in 1907 and stays with the company for 20 years. We are now entering the Bishverse. Take it away, Aaron. Okay, we are going to start our story the night of the Survivor Series. Uh, Brett, <clears throat> sorry, in real life, Brett would lose the title to Sean, but in this timeline, the ending to the match between Brett and Sean would just be the double disqualification schmaz like Vince said it would be on the documentary that we just mentioned, Wrestling With Shadows. Uh, both men would brawl, and DX and the Hart Foundation would interfere, and Brett would remain the champion. The next night on Raw, we see DX, HBK, Triple H, Hunter, uh, sorry, <laughs> HBK, Hunter, China, and Rick Rude. Uh, they all dress up as the Hart Foundation, uh, Brett, Owen, Bulldog, and I Hart. Kind of like when DX kind of made fun of the nation in real life. We get yes, this classic. a little bit earlier. Yeah. Classic. Um, Pillman is still alive at this point, but he will pass away shortly before the Royal Rumble, unfortunately. <laughs> 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 now you say unfortunately uh you have total control over this did 9 11 happen in your alternate s scenario as well it did yeah this is a this is really showing a lot of what's going on inside your head bishop but okay hey, you gotta try to keep it as con you know the continuity thing you gotta keep it as continuous as possible is that sure that i guess so i mean even if that means that brian pillman jr grows up without a father so long as the continuity <laughs> is all right so you could have saved pillman but you decide that he's still gonna pass away in this fair enough sorry please continue uh, the following week, Rick Rude would still make history by appearing on Raw and Nitro on the same night, same day in both universes well, or multiverses. Okay. That change. Well, uh, so why does Rick leave? Because he left allegedly because of the screw job. Oh, uh, I didn't, uh, sorry, 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 Brandon. I didn't even think of that. Uh, Rick Rude leave because of a higher contract offer from Eric Bischoff. Boom. Look at that. There you go. Right on the uh, <laughs> Over the next month and a half, we get the build to the Royal Rumble. Steve Austin has been making a name for himself, running rampant over the rock, winning the IC title and throwing the IC title off the bridge. And he declares himself into the Royal Rumble. He would stunner everyone in DX and the Hart Foundation on Raz leading up to the event. The Royal Rumble comes. And we have The Undertaker versus HBK in a casket match, just like we had in real life. But this time, the winner faces Bret Hart at No Way Out for the title, the WF title. Bret is on commentary for this. And just like in real life, HBK injures his back. And yes, it is career-threatening. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, and just as Taker was about to win the match... Kane interferes and costs Taker this match. He lights the coffin on fire, and the Kane versus Taker story on the road to WrestleMania has begun. Okay. So we get all the same stuff in real life as we do here. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Stone Cold still wins the Royal Rumble. 
Leading into No Way Out, it is very apparent that HBK is hurt, so he is given the option to pass his world title shot to Triple H so he can face Brett instead, but HBK refuses. He Ooh. acts Yeah. He acts like a dick and Triple H does not like it. Wait now, hold on a second. Sorry. Sorry, sorry, sorry. That's okay. So um so they're both heels. Mm-hmm. And but HPK acting like a dick is him doing a baby face move. So he's just being a dick to Triple to H. Triple H. Okay, yeah. gotcha. Exactly. At No Way Out, it is the British Bulldog and Owen Hart versus the New Age Outlaws. Uh, and we also have China versus Jim Neidhart. China wins, and this would be Neidhart's last pay per view match and WWF appearance as drug problems. <laughs> and not enough cap space. <laughs> okay. Got to make room <laughs> for that Bret Hart roster. contract. Actually, we had to make room for the Mike Tyson appearance. But oh, okay. More on that. More okay. on that. Uh, Brett versus HBK with, uh, with Triple H in his corner. HBK was moving like an old man with his bad back, and Brett took advantage. He would pinpoint the back, attack it, slap in the sharpshooter. Triple H would throw in the towel. And as he climbed in the ring with an irate HBK, Triple H would hit the pedigree. Mm hmm. Okay. The Raw after No Way Out. We have our top matches locked in for WrestleMania. It's Bret Hart versus Stone Cold for the title. HBK versus Triple H. Loser leaves town. Taker versus Kane. Mick Foley versus Cactus Jack. And. Uh, there'll be a hardcore death match, and we have Rock versus Ken Shamrock for the IC title. Over the next few weeks, we would get the buildup of a dumpster match between the Outlaws and Bulldog and Owen. The Outlaws are not part of DX, but have been hanging out with them, just like in real life at this point. Outlaws push Bulldog and Owen off the stage in a dumpster. The fans cheer as the face turn attempt of the Hearts has failed. <laughs> mm. Okay. And, of course, on the road to WrestleMania, Vince will bring in Mike Tyson. The chaotic scene we remember from 1998 happens here, too. Stone Cold flips off, and the whole thing happens. McMahon right, so the <clears throat> so even it. with Brett being uh, back in, the um, the idea is still that they're – that. Steve Austin is still going to get his coronation at Mania 14. Yeah, yeah. This is all billing to Steve Austin still. Uh, let's see. Brett would take Mike Tyson under his wing, make him an honorary member of the Hart Foundation, leading into WrestleMania. Mike Tyson is now the special enforcer at WrestleMania. Mm-hmm. Just like real life with DX, except we're doing it with the Hart Foundation. WrestleMania 14 arrives, and we have Foley defeating Funk in that hardcore battle for the ages. The Outlaws retain their WF Tag Team titles over to Bulldog and Owen. Shamrock defeats The Rock for the IC title, and the decision does not get reversed this time. Oh, sorry about that. A uh, decision stays. Shamrock is the champion. Uh, Taker defeats Kane. Triple H will defeat HBK, and HBK is not seen again until Survivor Series 2002 when he helps the WWF defeat the WCW. Triple H destroys HBK with the sledgehammer. Mm-hmm. 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 And now it is time for the main event, Stone Cold versus Bret the Hitman Hart, rematch from WrestleMania 13 and the Survivor Series 96. Bret Hart won the first two. Could Stone Cold win his first title and his first match ever against Bret? And at the end of a back-and-forth bloody battle, Mike Tyson distracts Bret. Austin hits the stunner. Tyson counts the one, two, three. Tyson rips off his shirt to reveal an Austin 316 shirt. Um, the Stone Cold era has begun. Tyson ends up punching Bret and knocks him out and placing the Austin 316 shirt on top. Well, there you go. There you have it. That's our fantasy booking from Survivor That's Series it. 97. That's it. Wow, this is, yeah. That's it. This is... <laughs> okay, and so uh, as I I'm kind of missed some stuff that you, uh, you've done in the past, um, what does everybody think of the, uh, what does everybody think of the Brett and Stone Cold match? 
It's not as good as the WrestleMania 13 match, but it's memorable because it gets Stone Cold over. And Stone Cold and Vince will go on and have their feud. And uh, where do you see Brett going? I haven't thought that far yet. I'm not sure. Um, I don't know if Brett... I'm thinking Brett might actually go down to the mid card after this and start um, making superstars, you know, putting them over, you know, like people like the rock and whatnot, uh, just making new stars for the new generation. Um, Yeah. I think Bret Hart actually will retire from in-ring competition by the year 2000. Okay. And uh, yeah, never to, never to come back. Uh, Okay. Um, okay so i gotta keep hammering in on this so Mm -hmm. they don't think that the 14 match is as good as the mania 13 match uh you and i both like the survivor series match so is the mania 14 match considered to be the worst of the three hmm it's debatable among experts some like us (laughs) prefer the survivor series others like melter prefer the wrestlemania match okay Cool. It's, it's debatable amongst the experts, you, including yourself. I love that. I love that you do that. Uh, <laughs> I love that for you. Yeah. I love that for you. I'm glad. In this in this alternate timeline, you're considered an expert along with Dave Meltzer. <laughs> okay. Well, there you go. Um, pretty good this week, I got to say. It was a nice little sort of uh, – and I think probably your most realistic uh, – uh, alternate timeline. I think that chances are that's at some point you got to think that that was what the plan was um, for uh, for Brett and uh, Austin at Mania 14. Yeah, yeah. You got to think that would be at least somewhat of the direction they, they would have headed in. Um, yeah, it was a little bit easier this week. I only had four or five months to do instead of a full year. So <laughs> a lot easier. Yes, <laughs> yeah. yes. A lot quicker. I think I like the condensed timeline a lot more. So are we done now or where do we move on to next in your, in your what ifs? Do you have, do you know what you're doing next or are you going to keep it? uh, Are you going to keep us on the edge of the seat? You know, I was only planning on doing three of these. So we'll see how the views do. If we can get this baby over 7,500 views and maybe I'll keep it going. But if not, we'll go back and uh, we'll start looking at some, um, previous matches and storylines that actually happened, <laughs> just like we used okay, to. Okay, <laughs> this is it. This is the so this potentially, potentially is the, is the end of us one. seeing inside the mind of Bishop the Bish verse. For now, there you have it, folks. There you have it. You've been inside the mind of the Bish for the last three weeks. How do you feel? Do you understand Dirty. him a little bit more? Yes. What other stuff is kicking around in there? Things that you probably don't want to talk about. Nobody wants well, to know what's in my head. No. <laughs> well, there you go. You can be happy to know that you get to leave the mind of the Bish and the Bish verse. But Bish, he's trapped there. Just like forever. Hotel California. I ain't going nowhere. Never leave. <laughs> Never leave. All right. Okay. Well, there you go. That's thank good. you. That's uh, good. Thank you. Thank you for that, Aaron. Huh. Let's uh, move on to some trivia for you. Let's yes. do it. Let's stump the pat. Stump G pat. All right, Aaron. Um, let me just bring up what you what you sent in here for us this week. I assume we'll be doing more. Um, yes, guess, guess the wrestler. wrestler. But we're yeah, not starting we off with that. What are we starting off with? What are we starting off with? We are going to start off with some old school uh, multiple choice trivia. Okay, there you these go. Well, yeah. cool, I thought these are pretty cool questions. So, okay. Here we go. Question number one. Yes. Which former TNA superstar competed in both of Hulk Hogan's and Triple H's 
last matches? Is it A, Samoa Joe? Is it B, AJ Styles? C, Kurt Angle? Or D, Bobby Roode? Wow, that is a good one. Um, let me... Uh... So uh, they competed in or they were involved in? Sorry? Competed, competed in both. Yeah. Okay, so... Yeah. Uh, Hogan's and Triple H's. Now, Triple H's last match. I'm just was trying a house to... show. Was yeah, a house okay, show was? Yeah. House show match. Okay. Okay. I'm going to guess Samoa Joe. Incorrect. If you have another guess, what would you what would you say? Uh, what were the, like? I don't think it was Bobby Roode. It was Bobby Roode. Yeah. Wow. Okay. There you go. I would not have. That would have been my last guess. I guess. Right. I suppose. Yeah. Uh, lay it out for me. What were was it? Just one on one matches. Oh, I should have written it down. No, there were tag <laughs> matches. Sorry. Oh, okay. <laughs> there you go. Yes. Well, I, I had no idea that Bobby Roode could uh, lay claim to that. Interesting. Mm -hmm. um, next. Oh. There we go. Next question. Who has wrestled more matches since WrestleMania 18? The Rock or Hulk Hogan? Um, I'm going to guess Hulk Hogan. Yeah. Hulk Hogan has wrestled yeah. more matches since The Rock, which is crazy. <laughs> yeah, but again, like, had I not uh, thought about the TNA stuff, then uh, I might have guessed The Rock. But The Rock was gone from Mania 20 up until he came back for that Cena match, right? Which was many a year. Yeah. 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 Fair enough. Fair enough. See, I I'm tracking your line of thought here now. Mm. I didn't even think of the TNA stuff myself. I was just thinking WWF, but no, you're right. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. Good one. So All wait right. now, is that is so is that is is the totals that you have not including TNA is just strictly it must. W it must include oh, okay. TNA. It must, okay. yeah. Okay. Because I think Hogan's only wrestled like three matches or something like that since being 18 in WWF. But yeah. Either way, uh the next question is who was the first wrestler to point at the WrestleMania sign? Was it A John Cena? B, Randy Orton, C, Brock Lesnar, or D, Dave Bautista? I would have thought it was Undertaker, actually. Um, wow. Another good one. Um, I think I think I'm going to go with John Cena. That is correct. It was John Cena. Yeah. Do you remember, do you remember what Mania was or, it, it, or what Rumble? It was after a Rumble, I imagine, right? Yeah, well, it was the first Rumble that he won. Oh, okay. There you go. Yeah, there you go. Um, the, okay, we have another question here. We have two more questions. Next is, which match has the higher Dave Meltzer rating? Is it Cody versus Roman, Bloodline Rules at WrestleMania 40, or Cody versus AJ Styles at Backlash France. Uh it is and I and I know this for sure. Uh it's uh Cody and AJ. It is Cody and AJ, yeah. Yeah, yeah cuz I remember uh, he gave it to he gave it to them when it was clearly um uh influenced by the crowd reaction in Backlash and uh and I remember being um a little disappointed he didn't give the Mania 40 uh, a match, uh, like that five-star match. And and, uh, and I remember people calling him on and him having to explain it. So that's why I remember. Nice, nice. Yeah, I'm also kind of miffed at this one, too. I cannot believe he gave that Mania 40 4.75 in the Backlash France five stars. I mean, come the F on. Holy I know. Cow. But, I mean, I, I, as much... And as great as it was, I think if I think if Austin showed up, he probably would have given five it stars. Five. Yeah, because yeah. I mean, and as good as it was, 
I think we can both admit that we were waiting for Stone Cold to come in that match, we even were. after even after Undertaker showed up. Yeah, yeah, we yeah. were. Fair enough. Good point. Good point. All right, last question. <laughs> The higher match rating between Brett and Owen Hart at SummerSlam 94, the cage match, mm -hmm. or Brett and Owen Hart at WrestleMania 10? Uh, Bishop, you're insulting me. It's WrestleMania 10. No, it's not. What? <laughs> <laughs> That's why I put this on here. I couldn't believe either. My jaw dropped. Brett I thought Owen. that it was a t that was a five star match. Um, you're telling me that. Are you telling me that the cage match was a five star match? No, neither were yeah. five star matches. Oh wait a minute, it's a cage match. Sorry, no, no, not think. Yeah, no, the cage match was five stars. I, I'll, oh, I'll really? double check. Maybe I'm wrong. I think he gave Brett and Owen four point seven five at Mania ten, and he gave the cage match five stars. I think that's why I had this question on here. But maybe it's the other way around. I'm wrong, but. Uh... We'll edit that later, but no, I'm pretty no, sure. No, no, whatever. I mean, it's, uh, yeah, I, I think I would have remembered if it was, uh, he had given uh, both uh, that and the latter match, five-star match. I uh, didn't think, I didn't think clearly enough, and, and now I look like a fool as a result of how I handled that question. I apologize. I hope, I hope everybody <laughs> can uh, forgive me. Aww. It's okay. Oh, all right. Is that that's the end of that? Is it? We're going on to these uh, belt things now. Let's do. Yeah, let's do some. Uh, can you guess the wrestler? All right. This is uh, championship runs. Uh, the last couple of weeks, I've been doing pretty good. I gotta say, uh, with it. Um, go ahead, Aaron. What do we got here? We're starting off with four tag team championships before we see a hardcore title. Then we have three WWF championships and four more tag team championships. So eight tag team championships, three WWF cha championships, and one hardcore title. Who is it? Uh, I think it's Mick Foley. That's going to be my guess. Um, you got it. That's yeah, it. I thought so. Uh, because the one hardcore championship is what gave that away. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. He, uh, yeah, that's a little piece of trivia is that he was the first hardcore champion and he only won it once. It's kind of, kind of crazy. Yeah, it was kind of crazy. <laughs> yeah. All right. Here we go. Wow. Yeah, here's, here's a big one. Yeah, here's a big one. But you should be able to get it. We have, at first, two Intercontinental Championships, followed by three WWF titles, three Tag Team Championships, another couple WWF titles, Tag Team, WWF, World, Tag Team, World, Undisputed, and then we have the Half Spinner, half WWE title as it was transitioned when he won it. Okay. Well, um, see, the thing is, is the design of the titles is what's throwing me off the, because that's the old school IC championship. Mm -hmm. and, and so, and this was the last guy to hold, this is the last guy to hold the, um, the spinner, the spinner belt, right? Yes, sir. Was it the rock? Yes, it's the rock. Oh, you nice. got it. Nice. Sweet. There you go. That's all the guest wrestlers for this week. And that's trivia time. Beautiful. Love it. I'm killing it this, this time around. <laughs> Yeehaw. Stick it up, Grandma. <laughs> What's that? 
<laughs> just, we used to say that all the time. Yeehaw, stick it up, Grandma. <laughs> I just, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know about that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Oh my. Yeah, I thought we'd start to do a little um, something new this week. We a little side segment called Did You Know? All right. Um, uh, what do I have here? Do I have any music? Uh, I could use the, we'll use the hot take music, I guess. Oh, the hot take music. All right, here we go. We haven't done a hot take in quite some time. It's been a while. It reminds me of like an AEW theme. <laughs> yeah, yeah, really or or an old WCW one that's like yeah. ripping off something. <laughs> okay, yes. What is the? So, did, did you know? Yes, please, please. Yeah, we're gonna start off. Did you see? If you can see this picture here, um, did you know that the WWF had to pay two indie wrestlers three thousand dollars to have the rights to the Undertaker name? That would be over seventy two hundred dollars today. Wow, no, I was not aware of this, and we're looking at it here. It was mm-hmm. a tag team, I guess. Yeah, the Undertakers. Right in ICW. What is yeah. ICW? Do you know? Insane Championship Wrestling, I think maybe. Yeah. I could be wrong, or or international. I could be wrong. Um, they look kind of like a demolition, sort of like a fat demolition Legion of Doom kind of thing going on. Yeah, it's almost like Legion Doom, Demolition, and Paul Bear all wrapped into one. Yeah. 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 Okay, next on the Did You Know, there's no picture, but this is kind of a crazy stat. WrestleMania three is the last time Hulk Hogan successfully defended the WWF title on a pay-per-view. He was 0-4 in title defenses after that. Yeah. <clears throat> Now, initially, you go like that doesn't make any sense. You're saying that he hasn't won since, but he's he won the title a bunch of times. But uh, and it makes more sense because, uh, I, I, like, when would be the next time that somebody successfully defended the title um, at Mania? Was it? Uh, it would Triple have H been in sixteen, right? Or must be in twenty. No, no, it would have been oh. Diesel in Mania eleven. Yes, you're right, Diesel. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, because mm-hmm. people don't want to see that. People don't want to see people remaining champion. That's right. That's right. Mm. And cool, though. cool little stat. Yeah, yeah, and I think this is probably <laughs> the one that blew my brain the most. Did you know AJ Styles has wrestled in both The Undertaker and Randy Savage's last match and is the only person to become a Grand Slam champion in both the WWE and TNA? Wow. The, um, yeah, uh, I, uh, yeah, uh, obviously I didn't know that, Aaron. Obviously I didn't. Why are you making a fool out of me? <laughs> Why are you pointingly, pointedly asking me this? Uh, it's crazy, though, that he wrestled in both uh, in Randy Savage's last match. And Taker's um, last match, yeah. yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, Taker, you never know, right? right. As of now, yes, uh, Taker could, I mean, you'd hate to see it at this mm-hmm. point. And I love for AJ that he was the guy, He was the last. he's the last guy. Um yeah, that's uh, that's awesome. For some reason, I feel like, and I I guess it's because we were watching him in TNA back in the day. Like I have a real sort of like, uh, like I'm really proud of AJ. I, I find he's been in uh, the Fed now f- for eight years, I think, mm-hmm. um, and uh, just amazing. Like I, I remember when he came out at uh, everybody remembers when he came out at Rumble. Um, but you know, at, at that time, the big question, I mean, people didn't know if he was going to keep his name, if he'd have to do an NXT run and then what was going to happen to him on the main roster after that. Um, but he- hell of a career. And I got to say, when all things are said and done, uh, one of the best things about being at mania this year is getting to see him in a match, um, before he retires, which is obviously sooner than later yeah yeah father time is ticking on him but he looks good for his age gotta say 
Oh yeah, I mean they all all these guys now, whatever they're coming back with, with the, the natural juice, they all come back yoked as hell. Uh, I read uh, earlier this week that Orton was pushing up to three hundred pounds. Two eighty uh, was last time I saw. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And now he's yeah he's starting to come back down again because he can't move around a lot. It's, uh, good i don't know i have no idea what's going on there <laughs> it's, very, it's very weird lots of that home cooking i guess i don't know i i mean i don't know i mean i just i just don't know he's at home cooking something anyway yeah <laughs> yeah yeah but. okay um time to pay the bills <laughs> wrestling fans do your shirts suck Aren't they all the same? Just one color, plain, and lame? Then go to epicshirts.ca and get yourself an epic wrestling t-shirt. Use promo code BWFWrestlingPod to receive 10% off your order. Remember, if you're not wearing an epic t-shirt, your shirt sucks. Besides wrestling pay-per-views and event posters, matches, and even wrestlers, such as the new Shockmaster shirt, Stay tuned. EpicShirts.ca has t-shirts for every category imaginable. They have 80s and 90s retro, anime, boxing and other sports, cats and other animals, celebrities, classic movies, so much more. So, so much more. Something for everybody in the family. Remember, use code BWFWrestlingPod and receive 10% off your order for a limited time only if you email us and show us that you bought a t-shirt using our code i'll throw in a free bwf hat and some rolling papers i'll even pay for the shipping i'm crazy remember epicshirts.ca and use the code bwf wrestling pod wow Beautiful stuff. Okay, and with that, you know, I was just going through the uh, photos here. I don't know if you got to see it, but I saw a lady on a uh, on a uh, uh, on a horse, and I thought it was Hook Tour Girl. You should pass along to our people at Epic Shirts. They should do a Hook Tour T-shirt uh, and uh, strike while the iron is hot. Absolutely, let's spit on that thing. Good idea. Hold on, hold on. <laughs> I got some. Hold on, we're. Where? Yeah. <laughs> nice. <laughs> okay, and with that, I think we have finally gotten out of the uh, best of the worst, right? Last week. Uh, yes, yes. Seven was crowned as the worst WCW gimmick. And uh, now I guess we're going to announce who's going to get that Shockmaster t shirt. Absolutely, absolutely. Um. Yeah. I How you doing? Have, this? Sorry, I was going to draw a name of a hat, but I don't have my hat here. Um, but that's okay. I'm going to write down the initials. There's only three people in this draw because only three people left comments over the past couple of weeks. So these three people, yes, you guys are lucky. You guys are lucky because you have a one in three chance of winning the T-shirt. So hold on now, let me do the math on that. Thirty-three point three. Repeating. Yeah, you're right. One and three. One and three shot. <clears throat> okay, so I have index finger, index finger, and thumb. I got three initials written down. You are going to pick oh, which finger. Okay? okay. You got index finger, index finger, and thumb? Yeah, so right, left, index fingers, and thumb. I'm going with thumb, thumb, baby. You're going thumb? Thumb. All right, Thumb. John King, you are the lucky winner of a Shock Master T-shirt, and it's actually designed or helped. It was helped uh, by us here at the BWF uh, to design that T-shirt. Thank you, Joe DeLuca, for that. Thank you, EpicShirts.ca. I will ship over my Canadian dollars <laughs> this week and get that T-shirt to Mr. John King. John, uh, you will have to message me with your address. Get to it. I know you're watching. Okay, and with the end of one tournament begins another, and what is it that we're we're going to be doing this week, uh, Mr. Bishop? This week, we are moving away from that worst, as you said, and we are doing the best. This is the WWE greatest of 
King of the Ring. The ultimate king, I guess. The Now, I, I know that I used this already, this episode, but this is really what it's supposed to be for. And it is our uh, tournament setup. King of the Ring, you uh, have divided everything up into uh, two pools. And are we going to be making our picks this week, or are we just setting it up and letting people do it? Up to you. We have, uh, was it, eight matches to go through. So, I mean, we can make the first round picks, or we can throw them up on the old YouTube community page for a poll and let the people decide. Up to you. What do you want to do? Do you want to get the ball rolling or let the people decide? Let's see. What do we got here? Um, I think, yeah, we got some time. Oh, we now know we got uh, predictions, right? Yeah. And then the real deal. Um, it's probably there are... long if you want to do it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there That's are some in on. here that are intriguing matchups, but some of them, I think, sort of speak for themselves. But either way, I think let's let the let's let the fans do it. The fans. OK, fair yeah. enough. Uh, we'll just go over to first round or the yeah, the first yeah. round brackets here. All right. So um, we got Mr. Brock yeah, go Lesnar, Brock Lesnar, uh, 2002 king of the ring and then we have uh mabel infamous 1995 king of the ring and uh i can't remember what reason it was but i definitely uh put over his reign at some point in time to your disgust i can't remember what the reason was but i stand by it um so there you go that's uh that's matchup number one i'm you know I think I'm probably in the minority there. I'd imagine that Brock Lesnar is going to be uh, winning that one. Um, See, here's the thing, though. We're talking about the best king in the ring. So was Brock Lesnar really he was not, better no. king over King Mabel? I don't no. think so. If no, this is I, me, we're, we're having Mabel move on to the next round. Yes, uh, and I agree, yeah. Uh, and, yeah, we'll come across that again, too. I mean, obviously, Brock is the better wrestler, but I don't even think – I don't think he ever wore a crown – he never called himself King Brock, uh, really did not do anything with the gimmick. And um, yeah, uh, but again, you know, we're dealing with uh, we're dealing with certain type of fans that aren't going to be thinking like us, thinking clearly no. like us. So I, I think Brock will go on, but I, I would hope that it was Mabel. The um, argument for Brock is that, you know, he did win the King of the Ring tournament in decisive faction, and then he actually went on with the stipulation that with the uh, that he would get the title shot at SummerSlam, and he won the title against He did the win the title, yeah. So that's the argument there for Brock Lesnar. But and then the other thing, too, is did Mabel have more matches? Did he fight more matches? Because back in the 95 King of the Ring, it was an actual one-night tournament after the qualifiers, right? But I don't think it was like that by 2002. No, Lesnar only had two matches on that last pay-per-view night, and Mabel, as you said, had four matches. Well, there you go. At least three. I think he had to buy one of them. But, you know, thing is, yeah. he still had to go through the whole tournament in one night. So, hmm. Interesting. Now, this one, uh, this one, it's a, another uh, interesting matchup for sure. Uh, tough, but I think a very obvious um this uh, obvious winner. We got Owen Owen Hart, and we have Edge. Now, although Edge did not do the, uh, you know, King Edge or whatever, he did put over the championship. He had a pretty good run with it. Um, it he made the um, the the title mean something, or whatever you want, like the crown, I guess. Uh, means something uh the the trophy was a big thing between him and christian that's right yeah christian was jealous and then they actually end up splitting up because of because of it trophy. Yeah. yeah um but i mean owen hart is probably i mean could win the whole damn thing really um and i think that uh, you know i don't even think that it matters whether or not you know oh if owen was still with us today his reign as king of the ring was the first true well no it was a really great king of the ring reign it was it really was king of hearts put him over he put over uh it really uh really highly um that would be my pick how about yourself oh yeah at uh owen hart 100 percent. then the finals the finals of bracket a i think are going to be 
Chef's Kiss. And yeah, speaking of which, our next matchup, we have the Macho King. Oh, yeah. Versus King Sheamus. Yeah. And um, now I wasn't really watching um, around. Well, I wasn't actually watching uh, around either of these times. But Macho King, that was who I was thinking of when I stopped myself from saying that that um, that Owens was the first great King of the Ring reign because uh, you'd have to say that Macho Man was the first great King of the Ring reign. Oh, absolutely. Uh, Macho King, he's my favorite. Like I, Macho Man and Bret Hart, they're my two favorite of all time, as you may know. Uh, Macho King is my favorite version of Macho Man. So Macho King is like my I love Macho King. Sorry, swearing. <laughs> and then we got Seamus. Uh, it looks like Seamus was a babyface king of the ring, right? Yeah, he was babyface king. He wore the crown. He had the King Seamus thing going on. He uh, made the Celtic crown, so he had his own little yeah. uh, twist to it. Uh, Seamus, you know, he's a Hall of Famer. You know, surefire Hall of Famer. Yeah. But, I he's, mean... he's an underrated king, I think. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but I mean, uh, he's just going up against, uh, you know, uh, a number one seed pretty much when it comes to these things. And, uh, and I, I don't know what kind of statistics happened during his reign, but, uh, you know, he could have won that championship and held it for years. He's still no, it would be uh, as good as macho king. Still no macho. Okay. So, uh, yeah, I think we're in agreement about that as well. Then we have another uh, old school gentleman by the name of Mr. Harley Race. Um, King Harley Race. King Harley Race. You know what? He made the gimmick before Macho King did. Uh, This might be truly the first great King gimmick. And he's going up against another very underrated King, someone that I thoroughly enjoyed and thought was very entertaining. King Mm -hmm. Corbin. Yeah. uh, Yeah. And... uh, I thought that Corbin did a, did a lot uh, for it. I, I I might be misremembering. We did a, a thing on Harley and he didn't like the gimmick. Right. And it really, to me, like it didn't make any sense for a guy like Harley um, to, to have the King gimmick. Cause he's, you know, he he had it in his name or whatever. He didn't really do much with it. Let's be honest. Like in terms of like, he didn't win the WWF championship. I don't know if he had a program with it uh, ever. Yeah. He, uh, he would face Hogan at Saturday night's main event and actually would be injured in that match in a table spot. He would screw over his abdominal section. He would get a hernia or something like that and uh, end up having surgery. And that was it. Career done. That was the end of his career. Yep. Oh, yes. Yep. Bye. Yeah, that was like and, an 88, I think, 88, 89. He wouldn't wrestle again after that. I had no idea. And uh, Corbin, like you said, uh, he was funny king. Um, you know, uh, he didn't really tread new ground with it in terms of the delusional heel that uh, thought that he was actually king as a result of winning the tournament. Um, but, yeah, underrated. I think um, didn't really do much with it. It was like a solid sort of like B. And like mid card nipping at the mid card to lower card when he was running with it. Uh, but, you know, entertaining nevertheless. Yes. Yes. And he would have people carry him out. I uh, like the Game of Thrones style and stuff that he would have over this uh, furs and, and whatnot. I mean, yeah, he did. He did all right. He did all right. He uh, he did what what he could with it. Um, I mean, you have an 80 year old Vince McMahon booking your King of the Ring. It's not much you can do, but yeah, I thought he did good with what he had. All right. So that's the A bracket. Now we're down into the B bracket, uh, mm-hmm. starting off with King Kurt, King Kurt Angle. Um, yep. Great. Um, what, do, what do you have to say? What do you have to say? I about love it? Kurt. I love Kurt as the King of the Ring. Um, that I still remember that pay per view to this very day. King Ring 2000, he came out and he was making fun of the Boston crowd, uh, you know, with the Boston accent and all that stuff. Um, he had some good matches. Yeah, I think 2000 was definitely his year to win, and he took that and he ran with it. He said he was King Kurt for a while, and then he would go on to win the championship from The Rock by that October. So mm, There you go. 
I mean, it's arguable. He's one of the better King of the Rings of all time. And he's going up against a guy that I might have to pick just based on the photo that I'm using of him alone, <laughs> which is uh, King Duggan. Um, I mean, what a joke. What a joke. Um, everybody knows that his gimmick is that he's retarded. And um, <laughs> he's certainly not shying away from it in that photo. Do you think he needed to be prompted to stick out his tongue and do any of that? I think, he, <laughs> I think that's his natural pose, right? His natural. That was his right? idea for sure. Yeah. You got to tell him to put the tongue back in, I think. It's yeah. Like, tell mm-hmm. him to stick the tongue out. Yeah. Yep. So what? <laughs> Unbelievable. Uh, he, he, what did he do? He didn't do anything, obviously, with it. But uh, how, how did he win it? Did he win a tournament or did he, he won it in a match or something? Did he, he beat Haku. He yes. Yeah. Well, there you go. And speaking of which, in our next matchup, we started off with King Haku. Now, King Haku, did he win it in any tournament or he win it in a match as well? Haku, I'm pretty sure he must have won it in a match. But uh... from Harley? From Harley, yes, that's right. It was from yeah. Harley. They had heel versus heel, and Haku beat Harley for the for the crown. Thank you. And uh, he's going against uh, the most recent winner in Gunther, Gunther, who is currently the world champion. And, uh, well, I mean, we never really spoke too much about what Haku's deal was. What was Haku's reign? Was Did he have a program, main, main event program or anything like that? No. Um, Haku is weird. Is it between her? Well, I guess... They had to get the crown off of Harley, and they wanted it to be a heel. So, and they kept it in the Heenan family, so they just gave it to Haku. Um, but then after that, they needed to get the crown to Randy Savage. So Duggan was the transitional crown champion who beat Haku, and then Savage would beat Duggan. Uh, I, I Yeah, I got to go with Gunther. Gunther is just restoring um, Absolutely. everything Gunther that he touches. Yeah. Yeah. So um so there you go with that one. Then we go back to uh a, a sort of an infamous reign and the story behind it of why he got it when he did and not earlier in Triple H. Uh what was he 97 King of the Ring? 97. Yeah. And then um sort of the first guy to wear it in a in the pay-per-view King of the Ring format, uh Bret Hart. And if I remember correctly, he was given it as a consolation for not uh, being the WWF champion, right? In That's correct. And yeah. did you know this is actually Bret Hart's second King of the Ring? Mm. He won well. the 1991 untelevised King of the Ring, and IRS was his opponent in the final. Mm. There you go. Um, so two-time King of the Ring? You only got to do it two times, maybe, or no? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, they're alone. I mean, look, and everybody knows we love Bret Hart on this, so that's going to be my pick. Um, so much was going on in 97, and wherever Triple H was at at that point in time, I, 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 the only reason that I remember or even have any note of him winning it is because he was supposed to win it the year before. That's right. That's right. And he didn't really do much of the crown afterwards either. He didn't go uh, pronounce himself king or anything. Um, Brett, at least, was in the feud with Jerry Lawler until SummerSlam over who was the true king of the WWF. So Yeah. And um, it may be the best baby face to ever do it. And Brett, I mean. Yeah, yeah. That's a fair, that's a fair assessment because Stone Cold was heel at yeah. the time. He was, and then, uh, yeah, like, I'm just thinking off the top of my head, because there's some people, obviously, that are not going to be involved with this, but, uh, but uh, yeah, we'll get to it. But And then in, in maybe the, again, like, I think this is probably the toughest one. This is the next, this next one is the toughest one. Yeah, in, this is my uh, favorite. Yeah, and this is why I'm, I think th- I'm looking forward to seeing what the fans say. Stone Cold Steve Austin, obviously infamous um famous iconic speech that put the wrestling world on notice 
uh, in his 96 reign. And then again, like one of the best to ever do it. Um, but King Booker completely changed him as a performer, uh, gave his career a complete new act. Um, and, uh, was a completely new King of the ring, a different kind of King of the ring after, I mean, and he was late into it, right? Like, I mean, there was dozens, a dozen, at least King of the rings by the time Booker did. And I, I believe he was the first delusional. I think I'm actually a King. I'm going to speak differently. That sort of deal. Uh, King of the ring. Yeah. Booker was awesome. Definitely. Uh, one of my favorite incarnations of the King of the ring. And did you know, that Booker was uh, uh, planning on retiring before he got the King of the Ring. He wanted to quit, and he went to Vince. He's like, hey, man, I'm done. I'm tired, and I just want to spend some time with my wife back home. He was like, well, why don't you bring Charmel on the road, and we'll put you King of the Ring. I'll make her queen. He's like, all right. And just the whole talking like uh, like the fake British accent and the pinky thing, like that all this – kind of happened at well at Booker's version was all kind of happened ad lived, you know, like just all these things just kind of happened. But yeah, um he was supposed to retire and Vince threw him his bone and here we go. We got one of the greatest King of the Ring gimmicks of all time. There you go. So uh some tough ones there for the people to uh, decide. Um and I don't even know who I would pick with that. I mean uh, obviously kind of like Brock, Steve never put on the crown. He was never King Austin. He never really did anything with it. But did anybody do more <laughs> with <laughs> with it? Really? Like, I mean, he made that speech Honestly, yeah. and he didn't really need to do anything else with it, you know? No, exactly. Exactly. So yeah, this is gonna be really interesting. Fans, please go on the YouTube, uh, give us your voting. Let's have some fun with this. And, of course, leave your comments in the video, and you can win a T-shirt just like our buddy John King did earlier. It's free shit. Just comment. That's all you got to do. I know. Comment. I know. I know. I hear you, bud. All right. Here we go. Predictions. Now, uh, Aaron, uh, I'd imagine, uh, are you, are you watching, uh, the pay-per-view this weekend? Are you going to do uh, your rating system again or what's the idea? Unfortunately, my friend, I will not be able to do it this weekend. I will be, uh, at a Metallica concert on Friday evening and then I'll be, yeah. that's night one. It's actually a two night concert, two nights. It's split up Friday and Sunday. Uh, I will be probably on the mend on saturday um but hey if you have are free no, 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 i'm not no, I, yeah no, i'm no. Work. i i work i'm you working work. i'm not going to see metallica <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm promoting events here so uh yeah well either way um we are going to do predictions yes and uh what do you have to say about it i i Again, is sticking true to our uh, motto and our creed. I've not really been watching AEW, uh, but following it from far. And uh, it sounds like uh, even as recently as uh, this evening on Wednesday, when we recorded this, they seem to have a good sold out crowd in uh, Cardiff, uh, which I love to see. Uh, hopefully, they're turning a corner in terms of uh, their perception. Um, the dark days are behind them. I can only think that this year is going to end better than it did last year. Uh, but who knows with these guys? All in London 2024. Uh, I guess we'll start from the top and work our way down. AEW World Championship match. Swerve Strickland, Daniel Bryan, Brian Danielson, pardon me, and uh, with his career on the line. Aaron, what do you got? Before I give my prediction for this match, I just want to say congratulations to the Dynamite Kid, Tommy Billington. His, he is now officially All Elite, 
and he will be facing Chris Jericho this week on Dynamite. That's pretty, pretty cool. Congratulations, Tommy B. <laughs> All right. <laughs> it's not. It's not even him. It's. It's more or less uh, your. Uh, <laughs> maybe the, I should be playing this because the police <laughs> are going to come for you soon, Aaron. Um, <laughs> with your insistence of giving us every update going on in Tommy B's life. Holy moly. Okay. Anyways, back to the predictions. And yes, good good for him. Did you get him? Did, uh, have you given him the the? <laughs> have you given I, him the the doll you made for? Him? <laughs> oh come on! Uh, the custom made action figure. Uh, no, no, I have not. I have not. I haven't okay. seen <laughs> cool. Oh, All right. Geez. Anyways, uh, championship <laughs> match. Who do you got? Oh my god! Uh, I really hope that Brian Danielson wins and ends the Swerve Strickland. How Turing. dare you? How mm-hmm. dare you? It's just not, I don't know, not doing it for me. But that being said, I really think this might be Brian's last match. Do you so, think? I think so, man. It's. I think it's he's got to win it. He, I mean, he can't, he can't leave. He's ruined the company. Every, <laughs> everything that has gone wrong with A&W, A&W, AEW, is because of Daniel Bryan and his from his insistence of the way that he wants the wrestling to look, which is boring and um, you know uh, he wants it to look like a shoot um, and Japanese and it's just boring. Um, it looks brutal, but it doesn't mean anything. And I always thought, like I remember when I got back into wrestling, it was like Daniel Bryan is the guy. And I saw his finishing move was uh, the running knee, right? Which at that time, for a guy like me coming back where, like, finishing moves were jackknives, uh, were stunners, uh, was sweet chin music, you know, like stuff like that. Like a running knee was like, I was like, what? And so his influence on the industry can not be understated, but I don't think it's been that great. And then he decided to fire CM Punk. Uh, he won't win any matches, which is probably the only thing that I can think of why he isn't going to win this. <laughs> is that he refuses to win. He's just destroyed any value that he has. Uh, he used to be the biggest name in the industry, and um, and now he can't draw. I don't think he can draw. So, anyways, but I, so I hope that he wins because he's. It's almost as if uh, he's a uh, he's a shark that has uh, dragged AEW out to the middle of the ocean, and now he's just going to leave it to drown. It's like a reverse reign of terror. Yeah. (laughs) That's even possible. It is, yeah. But that being said, I think Daniel Bryan's going to win this match. All being all, right. all, all seriousness, yeah, I think Daniel Bryan. So wins. we agree, and uh, yeah, I mean, I hear you. It's Str- Swerve, Swerve Strickland. He had his moment, and um, uh, and I still love him. I still love him. He, uh, you know, he sort of his undoing is fairly common in that he, sh- you know, he it was almost the same as MJF. Just he shouldn't be a baby face. He's way better heel. Um, and- lose Prince Nana. Lose the. Dancing, you don't no. like that, hey? No, you don't. No. Wow, all right. That's the only thing that's sports entertainment in AEW right now is that dance. The dance <laughs> is over. You're not, you're not wrong there. Actually, right. no, that's not true. Sports entertainment. Speaking of which, we have timeless Tony Storm. Yes, she is sports entertainment. Um, uh, what's that word look for? Personified, yes, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, and she's going yep. against the glamour, Mariah May. Um, you know, Mariah May, she's had a pretty good build up in this story. I think Mariah May is actually going to win this match. Um, yeah, I'm going to go for Mariah May, new champ. I think I am too. Now, again, I haven't uh, been following this. I know that the uh, timeless Tony Storm gimmick is over with the fans. Uh, it's not for me, but there's no denying that it's over. But uh, what I've also been hearing is that the, that the AEW faithful think that this is the sort of the best feud 
uh, and some say that it even could have closed the show, um, which I guess, I mean, it's a great sign. Certainly coming from, you know, about a year ago where people were saying that AEW Women's weren't doing anything with the women's division. Worst. Yeah, that was, yeah. was their whole thing. Um, so, and I hate to be crass like this, but um, um, Mariah May is hot. She is so effing, pardon me, Brandon, sorry. She's so effing hot. <laughs> um, uh, that uh, I saw her promo photo after she attacked Tony, where she had like a little bit of blood on her face blood. or whatever. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm. Mm. Anyway, so she's my pick. Um, yeah, I agree. And, I, and I'm not ashamed. I'm not ashamed. And we got the AEW American Championship, uh, MJF champion, who's done some cool things with it um, against uh, Will Ospreay. And MJF uh, beat Will Ospreay for this. Is that right? He did indeed, which is why I think Will Ospreay is going to win it back in his home country and turn it back to the UK title or international title or whatever the F it's going to be next. But yeah, yeah, MJF won the first one. Osprey is going to win this one. And there's going to be a rubber match eventually. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's reasonable. I mean, everybody kind of assumed that uh, Osprey was going to be taking on Swerve uh, and winning it or uh, whoever the champion was. Right. Um, So, yeah, it it only makes sense that he would uh, he'd be winning it here. Osprey is probably going to be Daniel Bryan for the championship at some point. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. And we got the other women's match, which, again, on paper, I mean, this is this is great. I got to say, uh, Mercedes Monet, lover or hater, she is the big money match. And Britt Baker, uh, who is AEW original and the, I mean, uh, if I was a betting person and somebody's getting fired or suspended after this pay-per-view, I'd say it's going to be Brett, would be my guess. Um, but um, who do you got for this one? I mean... This is um, this is a real head scratcher, I think. Uh, I and I don't know who's heel and who's not in this. Is it who's who? Do you know? Uh, I think you've already answered the question on who's going to win. But as far as who's the face and who, I have no idea. Um, I think they're both. I think Britt Baker's the heel. I think Monet's the face. But I think fans are treating it the opposite way. Yeah. So. Yeah, um, but I think, as I said, you've already answered the question. Britt Baker just coming off a of suspension, quite possibly will get suspended again. I don't mm-hmm. think she's handed a championship. Um, no, I think she's going out there. She's putting over Monet in front of the 45, 50,000 people, and that's it. Wow. Uh, yeah, it makes sense. The thing is, though, is that Mercedes Monet is leaving. Sucks. And she what? sucks. Yes, that's besides the point. But she, as soon as that contract is up, she's going back to Papa H oh. in the WWE. And she, uh, there was a news story that came out a couple of days ago that she said uh, she was even thinking of returning back uh, to Mania 39. And I guess she snapped her leg or whatever, right? And um, she was already going to return. So... You know, Britt Baker uh, is an original, and I mean, who knows where? I mean, nobody, I guess, at the end of the day knows she has no loyalty, I guess, probably either. But I mean, who, what do you want? Do you want Mercedes to go back to the WWE beating your sort of um, your day one women's wrestler, or do you want Brett to be uh, Brit Brit? to be able to say that she beat Mercedes and Sasha slash Sasha bank. I don't know, but yeah, I guess I agree with you on that, that it's going to be Mercedes. You're getting paid 5 million a year. You're, you're going over at Wembley. <laughs> yeah. Bottom line. <laughs> AW Jack TNT Perry. championship, Jack Perry in a coffin match. Yeah. In a coffin match. Now, um, did you see, how Jack Perry's TNT title was made. 
he threw the original in a body bag and he took one out, right? And uh, he got this brand new TNT championship. Yeah, but everybody I, does. I, I, so you haven't seen the video of... Uh, how it's made, Ashley? No, no, I haven't. I'm going to throw it on because it's pretty cool. Okay, okay. Uh, so who is the TNT champion? Is it Darby Allen? No, it's uh, it's, oh, Jack it's Jack Perry. Okay, okay. And he just made a new championship, just got this new championship. That's what I'm I saying. Yeah, I don't think Darby Allen's going to win this this match. Okay, if here. Jack Perry just debuts a new title. You see that? Yeah. So that's him. This is Jack Perry doing this. Yeah, I guess he like I I don't know what that's called. Uh blacksmith? No, um whatever it is, it's really interesting. Yeah, he melted it down and reshaped it and like threw the paint over it like that. That's really cool. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, he did it himself. Um Yeah. So anyways, <clears throat> I think he's probably going to win. <laughs> would be my guess. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And then, uh, the, yeah, the next match we have is Chris Jericho versus Hook. FTW Championship, last chance, FTW rules match. If Hook loses, he can never challenge for the championship again as long as Jericho is the champion. This never bodes well for the person who is challenging Chris Jericho wins. We've had too many title changes, I think. Uh, Jack Perry and Chris Jericho will retain. Hmm. Yeah. Uh... Yeah, I I don't know enough about this. I I want to pick Jericho just based off of how much hate he's getting online. Like uh, wrestling fans really are so fickle. Like uh, uh, for years, I, I, like I mean, for years Jericho has uh, has been awesome. This particular iteration of the learning tree may be not his best, but it's not go home, please retire heat by any means. No, and no. and uh, and I resent the fact that uh, that these goofballs online uh, and it's a minority, but they make up the majority of the AEW crowd are, are against him on this because um, I think Jericho's only done good, um, and. Uh, and I was thinking about this the other day. I mean, Hook Hook kind of reminds me of Joe Henry, uh, who I haven't seen anything other than he sings songs and he's over in a meme. And that's the way that uh, Hook was over, too. Like, people just memed him because he didn't say anything and he was in the background. And then, uh, you know, it was, it was an insincere, uh, uh, you know, su uh, support of fans. And... Uh, and now that's gone away and hook really doesn't have a whole lot going on for him. Uh, cause he doesn't have promos. That's why he wasn't speaking. He looks like a child and he's, and he's not. So any, uh, time that he can spend with Jericho will ultimately make him look better. Um, so anyways, yeah, all that to say, I'm going for Jericho as well. Fair enough. <laughs> uh, Joe Hendry, though, I actually went down a rabbit hole, like a two-hour rabbit hole, and just watched a bunch of Joe Hendry. Never now, watched a single match of his. No, I so that's, for yeah. all the opening, like every, every time he comes out for a match, yeah. like he has a new song for his opponent, right? And right, yeah, it's really funny. It's really yes. good. But yeah. I've never actually seen the man wrestle. No, once. yeah, and that's yeah, and it's sort of like maybe Dan Housen too, like. Um, you know, and like at a certain point, it looked like maybe Orange Cassidy would have been there. I think maybe Orange has kind of moved out of that uh, sort of thing. But yeah, like I, all I know about Joe Henry is that he's got this song and that people are behind him. I have no idea if he's a good wrestler or anything else beyond that. But God love him. <laughs> God love and him. You got to get over him. Yeah. Uh, let's see. We have two matches left. Uh, AEW World Tag Team Championships, the Young Bucks versus FTR or the acclaimed. 
Now, is yeah. this going to end up being a triple threat or no? I don't think it's supposed to, but you never know. It could it could end up being that way, but yeah, because I can't uh, I can't see them leaving FTR off the card. But isn't that who fought last year? Yeah, they uh... they fought FTR so many times, like even before Wembley last year, and yeah. even since they've they've wrestled a few. So it's yeah. probably going to be the acclaimed. Yeah, um, I still think Matt and Nick Jackson are going to win, regardless who they're fighting. Yeah. I agree. Um, you know, if Daniel Bryan isn't the reason why AEW is where it's at right now, the then are, it would be the Jacksons yeah. for sure. Um, mm-hmm. And I used to really like them. And, and I don't have – I think that they are great wrestlers, but they um, they uh, just don't have the it factor. And they seem to um, – I mean, it's the knock that's been against them. They just seem to be full of themselves. And uh, I think it's too – the detriment of the company. I'm not behind. Like I get what the whole Matthew and Nicholas Jackson shtick is. Um, but I don't think it was worth CM Punk. Nothing was worth CM Punk. No. Okay. And actually not too bad overall for an AEW show. I gotta say, we're already at the bottom of it. Uh, casino gauntlet match. I have no idea who, um, do you know anybody else? Has anybody else been added since, um, all I know is that there's eight surprise entrants. Oh, so it's all them, supposed to be eight surprise, is it? Yeah. Uh, well, I'm not sure how many people are in the match, but there's at least eight surprise entrants, and one of them is rumored to be one Robert Lashley. Now, really, I'm mm-hmm. surprised that he's going there that fast. Bobby Lashley um, and MVP. They made a. Um, copyright thing for the hurt syndicate yeah now i I mean no no i i just would have thought that he would maybe go to new japan for a bit maybe fight around a little bit before going right to aew um now that's awesome he's uh i mean the the whole hurt business thing uh was great everybody was upset that uh that they uh, got rid of it as quickly as they did. And probably Lashley is going to make these AEW guys look like youngsters. Yeah. I think <laughs> like, Lashley might be good for the company, honestly. Um, if, if there's one person that could, I don't know, if he's booked right, that could do something, man. It could be Bobby Lashley, but said he's got to be there, I think, with MVP. the got to oh, be yeah. a duo. And said he's got he to be booked right, man. If he's just going to be another mid Carter, then whatever. But... No, well, yeah, he it wouldn't make any sense. Like, I, I, honest to God, like who? Uh, he's like he's a black Brock Lesnar. Like, there's yeah. there's nobody that is going to be able to, like, you know, not Brian Cage, not MJF, you know, um, not Marco like, Stunt, you know, not <laughs> no. not, not Jack Perry. <laughs> no, no, yeah, like these guys are going to look like little kids. Um, yeah. So, uh, what about Ricochet? Is there any word on if he's going in, or what do you call him? Are we allowed to see? Rick- yes. Rick- yes. <laughs> um. Yeah. Um, I haven't heard any word that. Who cares? Yeah. That's. Yeah. I, I see. I would think it would be disappointing if it is him, but I, I for some reason, I feel like it's going to be him, and then Lashley a bit later. I don't know. So, but either way, are you saying that your pick is going to be Lashley? If Lashley's in the match, yeah, I'm picking Lashley. Yeah. I I don't even know. Yeah, who no, else you, can, to you say. can't. You can't. Yeah. No, no. So it's whatever. Just, it is. Yeah. yeah, it's it's whatever. So hopefully Lashley's in. Hopefully he he wins. But if not, whatever. It's a throwaway match anyway. But yeah, there you go. I think we've uh, we've agreed we, on every and single everything. Match. So I'm just for for badness. I'm going to switch it up, and I'm going to say Britt Baker because that's the one that yeah. I think. Uh, okay. So I'll, I'll say Britt uh, over Mercedes, even though uh, logically it doesn't make any sense. Fair enough. All right, there you go. Predictions, predictions, predictions. And as we wrap it up, we go to your uh, real deal. <laughs> All right, Aaron. 
Aaron Bishop, if that is your real name. What do we got? They this call week? me the Bish. Uh, first video we have, I think, is pretty okay. cool. Got to give this referee uh, props, man. Wow, yeah. yeah. Take it away for for the audience for us. Yeah, yeah. It looks like he did a uh, is it a uh, suicide dive? Nice. He's got some. He's got some weight for it. Where where's this out of? Do you know? No idea. No, but yeah, little little planche over the top rope. Not bad. Yeah, and a boy. I wouldn't be able to do it. I'll no. tell you that. Oh, that's for sure. And uh, we got uh, okay. What we got here's uh, is this another disgusting botch? Yeah. Uh, okay. <laughs> it's just oh, that's a woman, is it? And just throws her and. What the? F and everybody says, "Oh no, no, I'm gonna." Oh. oh no. Stupid, stupid, stupid people. Uh, so stupid. You love this so stuff. I, I can't. Do. I don't think this is ridiculous. <laughs> um, oh, this is. Listen, if you're squeamish, folks, look away. Yeah. Uh, it's guy. Oh, did he crack his leg? I hate those, man. I hate those. I'm not even gonna look at that again. You didn't even look at it. I'm glad that that was. I got it on my screen. I'm watching it on my screen. Oh man. Okay. Brutal pole driver. Wow, wow. That's cool. That's almost like uh, one of our Shane Mercer, one of our friend of the show, Shane Mercer's kind of moves. Looks like. Cool. Nice. Um, did you see that Shane Mercer put up a, his own list of things that he wants to do in the indies? No, I didn't see that. Yeah, I saw that the other day. It's stuff like, um, I don't know. I, I can't remember off the top of my head. It, it seems fairly reasonable. <laughs> it's, like, it's like pay rent. Uh, <laughs> Eat food. Eat food. <laughs> Have phone working throughout the whole month. Oh, poor Shane. He just got into a car accident. His car just got totaled. If you guys oh, have any, really? <laughs> yeah. oh. he's, he's putting his pay, oh, his PayPal no. and the information, his Venmo information online. So if anybody's out there and you're a fan of Shane Mercer and you have the means, go send the man some money because he needs your help. God love him. Um, is it this? Oh. Yeah. That's good. Um, yeah, you hate to see it. What do we got? Uh, what do we got next here? Why did the other guy? Oh, yeah. That's so funny. Why did the other guy move too? That's hilarious. For some he's reason, literally doing a Batista back bump, right? You know, where the one yeah. where Batista like falls backwards. He's literally doing a Batista bump as the car is driving by. Well, yeah, I don't know. For some reason, it. Uh, I mean, it really is more distracting from the guy that's getting hit by the car. But for some reason, that reminds me of Lee Drover. Um, that's like something that Lee would do is, is like not take the uh, not take the move, but do the sell. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, it's so funny. But yeah, that's uh, that's the real deal this week. Everybody. Oh, that's it. Had, OK. Yeah, I think, well, yeah. If I knew that I was going to be that quick, I would add some more. But. No, actually, yeah, it's, it was a nice little, it's a nice little, uh, it's a nice little thing. And yeah, uh, good, uh, good on, on, uh, Shane Mercer for, uh, keeping going. Uh, have you, uh, have we heard from our boy, um, uh, Andrew Anderson recently? Uh, he's in Vegas right now with his missus and, um, yeah, they're, they're doing a remembrance trip, uh, about Kevin Sullivan with some close friends. So, oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. He's doing yeah. good. He's doing fine. Good. 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 All right. But speaking of close friends of the show, next week we are going to have an August uh, August Artois appreciation segment. The man's been working hard overseas. He's been busting his ass, getting his head busted in by Savio Vega, that son of a bee. We are going to have some some footage we have a lot more in store i'm not sure what the topic is going to be but do not take it serious everybody because we do not watch the product have a good week wrestling fans if you liked what you saw in this video please 
go to our Patreon account. The link is here at the bottom of the screen. For only $3 US a month, you can get our full episodes uh, as they're released early. You can see extra content not seen on our YouTube and TikTok channels and a whole lot more. Thank you.